Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you all about lambing. We're gonna go over what we do here on the farm to get our ewes bred and ready and how we care for our newborn lambs once they are. Now this farm is located in southeastern North Carolina, which means our winters are very mild. Now while it will dip below freezing at night, it's generally sunny and at least 40 degrees during the day. We're likely to get a few freezing rains, but not much snow. So for us, it makes sense to lamb in the winter. We do this for a couple of reasons. One, the sheep aren't on the pasture this time of year, the grass doesn't grow very well, and our pastures really need a rest. So it's a good time to bring them into a barn situation and just feed them hay for a little while. This allows us to keep a close eye on everybody and have some stalls available to separate mom when we need to. Now we raise Katahdin hair sheep on this farm. And while they are known to lamb more than once a year occasionally, sometimes as many as three lambings in a two year period. But for us, we only lamb once a year. I feel like it's easier on the ewes, easier for them to maintain their body condition, which is really important. And lambing takes a lot of our time, and the winter tends to be a slower period here on the farm, so I can really focus on the care of the newborn babies. Another big advantage of lambing in the winter is that the colder temperatures tend to suppress the parasite load that these sheep are exposed to. So the lambs can get a good start in life without having to worry about that. Sheep have a five month gestation period. So this year we wanted our lambs born in December and January. So we put the rams in with the ewes in mid July. Sometimes that'll be a little bit later, but we typically like to have all our lambs on the ground by the beginning of March. That's about the earliest that our pastures will be ready to graze again. And we wanna get those lambs eating fresh grass as soon as possible. So I want all my babies born while they're in this winter barn area. Now you want to ensure that the body condition or the level of fat on your ewes is really good before you put your rams in. That's the other advantage of starting our breeding season mid-summer. The grass is plentiful and my ewes are fat as can be. Now having some extra body fat will increase fertility in general up to a point. You don't want your ewes obese or fertility will actually dip. So there's a sweet spot there, but you definitely want to have them at a good, healthy weight with some fat on them. There is a practice known as flushing that can increase the likelihood of multiple births in your ewes. And that's where people will start to feed a little bit of grain around breeding season or just before. While twins or even triplets are nice to have sometimes if you're trying to up the numbers of your flock, single lambs in my experience tend to have larger birth weights and they tend to grow faster because they have all of that good mother's milk all to themselves. Now we don't practice flushing on this farm. I like to keep the feeding program pretty consistent throughout the year. So they are getting a little bit of grain during that time, but really they're subsisting mainly on the grass, which is lush and plentiful for them uh, midsummer like that. During that five month gestation period, you're not gonna notice a whole lot of difference in your ewe until about the last six weeks or last trimester. That's when most of the growth in that baby will happen. You may see your ewes become more evenly round on both sides of their body. Now their left side is where the rumen is, so that's gonna be full just from eating a lot of grass or hay. But if their right side is equally or even more full, then that is a good sign that they're pregnant. You can have your vet ultrasound or do a blood test if you wanna confirm pregnancy. Here we just make sure we have enough rams and that we leave them in long enough that most of our ewes are gonna get covered. Now, as long as your ram is not aggressive with your lambs, it's fine to leave them in with your ewes during this period. Sheep are herd animals and they really don't like to be separated. Plus the more groups of animals, the more management involved. So for us, it's much, much easier just to leave our nice gentle rams in with the ewes. Really for most of the year, the only time we'll separate them is when we have young ewe lambs that we don't want getting pregnant. As far as feeding goes, you wanna make sure that your sheep always have access to a good grass hay. So we provide them with a round bale. We'll also toss in a few bales of Timothy for some added nutrition once in a while. And they view that as a special treat. These ewes get really hungry during this time of year. They're growing babies and they're making milk. So we wanna make sure that they have plenty of food available. We will up the amount of grain that we give them and I will add some alfalfa. 
Now, if I could find good straight alfalfa hay, I would feed that, but in this area, it's very difficult. So we like to feed either a small alfalfa pellet that they can eat dry, or if we have to feed larger ones or alfalfa cubes, I will soak them overnight. This just lessens the risk of them choking because these hungry girls are gonna eat really fast. And anytime you're introducing a new feed to ruminants, you wanna introduce it slowly. So I'll start just integrating that alfalfa little by little. We give our sheep that supplemental feed about eight weeks before lambing starts through about the first eight weeks of the lamb's life or until they get back on pasture. A good way to know if you're feeding your ewes well enough is if you see them laying down, chewing their cud for large parts of the day. Also, you, you wanna make sure that they're maintaining their body condition. So really watch their waist, feel their loins, make sure you can't feel their ribs very easily. And their condition will also be evident in their milk supply. So as they start to produce milk, you're gonna to wanna to check their udders. And just like the rest of the year, mineral is really important to provide to them. We built these nice PVC feeders. It keeps the mineral dry. We can keep it pretty full. And you wanna make sure it's a good loose mineral that they can get easily with their little soft tongues. And just a reminder to make sure that mineral does not contain copper. Sheep have a low tolerance for copper, so you'll wanna make sure it is labeled safe for sheep. As lambing time approaches, you're gonna see some changes in your ewe that are gonna let you know that she is imminently ready to give birth. Yeah. You may notice her go off her feet a little bit, separate from the herd sometimes, be a little more sluggish or lay down more frequently. That's okay as long as she is still getting enough nutrition. The most noticeable sign you're gonna see is that her udder will begin to fill up. This happens for several weeks before lambing, but a few days or really within 24 hours before that lamb is gonna be born, you will see her udder get really, really tight and sometimes even the teats will be red. This will be so full. She may be even uncomfortably walking and bowing her legs in the back a little bit to avoid bumping those teats because they do get sore. You can see how wide this mama is looking. Her belly will actually start to drop subtly as she gets closer to lambing. And then just before lambing, you'll see her vulva actually swell and sort of poof out. She may even hold her tail out a little bit like it's uncomfortable. The initial signs of labor can be really subtle. Often I'll just notice that a ewe is breathing a little bit hard. She may be taking a few steps, laying down, circling, pawing the ground. These are all good signs that labor has begun. A more definitive sign is when you'll actually see mucus or fluid start to drip from her vulva. Now I do have stalls set up for the ewes so they can have some time to bond with their babies once they're born. But while they're actually in labor, I want them to be out in the open. I want them to be able to move around. I don't want any stalls or walls getting in their way. I know my girls like to get up and walk around and that can really help labor progress. Now, most of the time, I'm just gonna come out in the morning and there'll be new lambs running around chasing mom. And that's really what I want from my herd. I want ewes that don't need any assistance. But in those rare cases where I am lucky enough to catch one in labor, I will stay and watch. So I will look at my clock. I wanna make sure that there's progress at least every hour in the early stages and once babies start to present, that is when you start to see feet or a nose emerge from the vulva, you wanna see progress at least every 30 minutes. Knowing when to assist your you or not is a really hard call to make. I tend to wait probably longer than some do. Times I will intervene is if a you is really struggling, seems to be in pain for a long period of time, or if I notice that the presentation of the baby is incorrect and it's just not gonna pass through the birth canal by itself. Once your ewe is done giving birth, you wanna watch for her to pass her after birth. And that's gonna be a long, sort of purplish red sack. You definitely do not wanna pull that. You're gonna to wanna to let gravity pull that out of the ewe because 
ideally it comes out all in one piece. If it tears, it can be harder for her to pass those smaller pieces. Also, her placenta may still be connected by some blood vessels and you definitely don't want to tear those that could cause internal bleeding. Once the afterbirth is passed, a lot of ewes will eat theirs. If they don't, I will remove it from the area. It can be an attractant for predators. And I'll either toss it far off in the woods, in a compost pile, or let my dogs eat it. I also tend not to intervene until the lamb is dry and up trying to nurse. Now I know some people will rush in and towel dry the lambs, and I might do that if it was really cold here, but I really want mom to lick those lambs dry because that's an important process in bonding the two. And once she's back out in the flock, I want the, the two to be able to find each other no matter what. So I want that bond to be good and strong. Occasionally, if your ewe still has another twin or triplet to deliver, she won't pay much attention to the first baby. And in those cases, I may intervene again if it's really cold or if the time goes on too long. But 99% of the time, I just let mom dry the lambs. This also stimulates them to try and stand and nurse. Now, once I'm sure that mom is all done delivering her lambs, I will move them to a secure stall where they can spend a little private time together without the rest of the flock bothering them. I'll make sure she has lots of fresh water. She's gonna be thirsty after delivery. I'll give her some grain, some alfalfa, plenty of access to hay, and I'll offer her some warm molasses water as well to aid in her recovery. hands-off during lambing. The time that I will intervene is to help these guys get their first suckle. It's really crucial to the survival of your lambs that they nurse within the first few hours of life, ideally within that first hour. So as soon as mom has licked the lambs dry and they're starting to stand and try and nurse on their own, I will go in. Now these babies are a little bit older and you can see their, their navel or their umbilical cord is already dried up. But uh, right after they're born, I will dip it in some iodine that prevents uh, any bacteria from getting into this open wound. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that mom has plenty of milk and that she's flowing. Now, sometimes they can have plugs in the teeth, so you're gonna wanna do what's called stripping. You're gonna wanna go in, grab the teeth, with clean hands and make sure that milk is flowing out. There may be a waxy or hard plug in there that you need to clear. If mom has good milk flow, the next step is to make sure that the lamb actually latches on and suckles. Most of the time lambs are gonna do this really by themselves. Mom may help nudge them a little bit and you can kind of let that happen. If it goes on longer than an hour without them successfully getting a drink on their own, I will position the lamb and actually put the nipple in their mouth. And that is usually enough to get them going. If all else fails, I will milk bomb and either bottle feed or stomach tube the lamb, depending on how well they can swallow on their own. Lambs will get really weak really quick if they don't eat. So sometimes you're gonna have to actually tube the milk into their stomach to get them some calories. Once they have a little bit of milk in their stomach, they usually perk right back up. Now, I only wanna keep mom and babies in the stall for the first few days. I want the babies to be able to run around and play with each other, and I want mom to reintegrate with the flock as soon as possible. Especially if she only has a single lamb and they're bonding really well, they may only stay in here for a few hours. If she's got two or three and they need a little extra help, it might be as many as three days, but we tend to not go over that. This is our newest lamb. He's doing good. So if you don't actually witness your lamb nurse or you're not sure if they're getting enough, there's a couple things you can check. If your lamb is active and warm, it's probably fine. Without some calories from mother's milk, he wouldn't be doing that. If you're worried about body temp, a good way to check is to stick your finger in their mouth. If their tongue is warm, and if he sucks on it, that's also a really good sign. But a good surefire way to make sure that your lamb is getting enough is actually to feel with both fingers on either side of their loin. If you feel resistance, like you can't put your fingers together, like this is full, that means that they've been able to fill their stomach. 
If it feels yeah. empty or hollow, then your lamb needs some more nutrition. Good job, buddy. <laughs> well, most of the time, lambing goes really smoothly, and fingers crossed, we have very few problems. It's always good to be prepared. So over the years, I've put together a bit of an emergency veterinary kit. There are a couple things that I feel like are kind of important to have on hand when it comes to lambing. The first thing and the most important in my mind is iodine. You're gonna wanna dip the navels of the babies. This is also great for any kind of wound. It's good to have on hand. If you happen to have a prolapse or you that has extensive damage to her vulva from a difficult birth. I like to have syringes and baby bottles on hand. Syringes are a really good way to start with newborns. I can milk the U right into here if I need to give the baby a little help nursing right at first. Uh, I can also attach a feeding tube if I have a weak lamb that hasn't nursed and I need to stomach feed it. These are also great, of course, if I need to administer any medication. The other important thing I wanna have on hand are some nutritional supplements, mostly for the mom, but sometimes for the babies as well. I like to have something that has some energy and some vitamins and minerals available for her. Power Punch, Nutri Drench, there's a bunch of things on the market. You could also make your own. Um, they tend to have a molasses base. Molasses has a lot of B vitamins and that can really help them recover. I also make sure I have CMPK on hand in case they go into milk fever, which means that their calcium in their bloodstream dips and that can be deadly. Other nutritional supplements like selenium, vitamin E, oral or injectable vitamin B complex is good to have. While it's not necessary, it's also good to have some gloves and some sterile lube just in case you need to go in after a lamb that presents wrong. Other types of things I like to keep in this kit are hoof trimmers, my castration banding equipment for when the time comes, and ear tagging equipment so we can identify our lambs. We won't do that for the first few weeks though. Now it is absolutely crucial to the survival of your lambs that they start to nurse. Ideally within the first hour of life, but they definitely need to get a good dose of colostrum in the first 24 hours. Now colostrum is the mother's first milk. It's very fatty. It also contains a lot of antibodies. Those antibodies can help protect the lamb early on in life before they can build their own and before they have their own intact immune system but they can only be absorbed really well through the gut for the first 24 hours of life. You can buy replacer colostrum. I like to always have some frozen real colostrum on hand. So if I have a mother that has extra milk and will allow me to milk her, uh, I will save some. This is good for about a year in the freezer. And while natural mother's milk is always best, I definitely wanna make sure I have some milk replacer on hand. This is a good, quick, easy source of extra nutrition for your lambs if they need it. What you don't wanna do is wait till 3 a.m. when you're in a bind and you can't get to a feed store. You definitely wanna have this on hand ahead of time. Even if you don't need it, throw it in your freezer, just have it there in case. If you're just getting started with your first crop of lambs, we hope this video helps you. If you'd like to see how we raise our sheep the rest of the year, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.